does it feel like to hang 10? Oh. <sighs> to get to the point where you can hang all 10 of your toes over the nose of a board, it's not about getting there, it's the process. When you first get your toes out all on, on the nose, you're not thinking about being there, you're thinking about how you got there. You're thinking about what it took, how many times you didn't do it right. That's what it, it's all about, it's about failure. Not only coming to grips with failure, but becoming it becoming enjoyable, because that's what it is. That's what makes the success be so fulfilling, is it took you so damn long to get there. I'm Timmy Hayes, and I'm from Malibu. I started surfing in Malibu uh, at age 13, and I've been there ever since. I grew up in Pasadena, California. The beach was a long way, so we had to con anybody we could to get us over there. My friend Mike had an older sister who was pretty good looking, and we conned her into taking us to the beach because we told her where there was half-naked, beautiful men all day long, you know, in their towels, getting getting changed. And we could introduce her to some of the guys, older guys that were her age. That was my first trip to Malibu. Did you introduce her? Oh, hell no. We got in the water and we never saw her again. So, you know, we were out there till dark. I don't think we ever took a, got a ride from her again. Uh, my father was someone who always taught me uh, to look out for the underdog, to stick up for the small guy, the little guy. I always grew up with that in mind. Not necessarily a charitable guy, but I always try to do the right thing um, and, and help people that are in need. My father, I had a great example of that. He was constantly doing things like that. We had foster kids in my, in my family, in my household, all the time. Pretty serious kids. My parents were, were gracious enough to take the ones that the most wouldn't. So I got firsthand from my father a sense of compassion. I learned a lot of things, but the compassion, grace, and patience were definitely part of it. And my parents didn't care a whole lot about money. They cared about things that money can't buy. I learned that at a young age just from watching them interact with these special needs children, and that's what I do today. I surf with special needs kids. It doesn't come from thin air. It comes from my, how I was raised. We were shortboarders, it was the 80s, and we walked by First Point, and I remember seeing all the guys with their funny mustaches and their longboards and the older guys, and I was like, what the hell are these guys? What's going on over here? It was the early 80s. We had our pastels on. It was all pink and blue and aqua and green. It was that love that I first was semi-afraid of those guys. It was like having a mean uncle that doesn't really talk to you very much but he's still really cool and you look up to him and you idolize him. I don't know why. It was about soul. It was about style. That's what changed me. That's what drew me. It wasn't about surfing anymore. It was about this lifestyle. You could smell the soul walking by these guys. The words they said was different. It was just different. It was cooled out. It was mellow. These guys were the coolest thing I'd ever seen. That history and that wall and that parking lot and that wave come to mean everything to me. People go there every day and, and pass by things that I don't take for granted. They get Matthew McConaughey out on the surfboard and you got 50 cameras out there. You know, Josh Farber comes to the point you got no cameras out there. I like to bring that history out. The little known facts, the unknown facts, the little known history is important to me. It helps me communicate with those that do not know that they should have pride in this place. But when I grew up there, I lost blood there. I lost pride there. I earned my way into that lineup with respect, by respecting the guys that were there ahead of me. If somebody is, is dropping in on an old guy that has been there, I'm gonna be that voice to let him know, hey, this is how we do things here. I don't just skate, I don't just surf. The people that I skate with, the people that I surf with, are world class and the best of the best. So I sneak my camera in there and I get some of the greatest shots that I could get because I have access. Alan Sarlo is, is the very top of our pecking order at Malibu and he's dropping in on a wave. He's barking at everybody and everybody knows it. If I have a camera out in the lineup, he's barking out my name. He's paddling into the wave and saying, Timmy, to get me to go because he's such a ham because I have a camera. Who gets that opportunity? Alan Sarwa does not call people's name to get into the wave with him. But because I have a camera, it gives me access. And because I've known all these guys all my life, I can get real personal with them and get real with them. 
The motto of the Malibu Underdogs is that we do care about things that money can't buy. We're a group of guys that skate and surf and along the way share that stoke with people who would not normally have a chance or an opportunity to do that. Whether they're autistic children or inner city kids who've lived in Los Angeles their whole lives and never touched salt water. If I can get them on a surfboard, it changes from underneath them, you see their face. And I mean, it really is life changing. And to get to do that over and over again is remarkable. I felt like I wanted to share that with other people. Not what I do, but what my boys do. If I can get their face on camera, along with the child's face on camera, and share that stoke with their parents who would not be in the water to see it, it's priceless to me. It's contagious. I spent the night at my friend Mike's house. He was my best friend.